Hey guys, Joe here from the Bees in Your Backyard. So if you want to attract bees to your own backyard, there's two things that bees need. One, they need food, so planting flowers can help with that. Uh, but today I wanna to talk about the other thing. Bees need a place to live. So 80% of the bees in North America nest in the ground. And so you can provide habitat for them by leaving some bare ground. Many bees like to nest in bare, sunny patches of dirt. Uh, so you could do that, but another way that people attract bees to their yard is by providing nesting habitat for the other bees, the non-ground nesting bees. We call these cavity nesting bees. I like to call them twig nesting bees. In nature, they're gonna find an old dead tree. It has old abandoned beetle burrows in it, you know, like a hole in a, in a dead stump. The bees will find that hole and they go in there and kind of clean it out and repurpose it for their nest. Several different kinds of bees do this. Two of the most common that we see in our backyards are mason bees and leaf cutter bees. So mason bees go into these holes and they use mud um, to make kind of to make rooms in this little hollow cavity. Leaf cutter bees use leaves, kind of like wallpaper. So they carry a piece of leaf back to the nest and they'll line the nest with that. So we can provide habitat for these bees by making uh, artificial nesting cavities for them. You could do this as easily as drilling holes in a piece of wood, but today I wanna to talk about making a bee hotel. And there's two ways you can do this. I'm gonna talk about doing this with paper straws or with hollow stemmed plants. So first we gotta go get some plants. So for me, one of the most convenient sources uh, for these twig nesting bees is an invasive reed called Phragmites. So I'm here at one of my local parks. We have uh, kind of a man-made lake here in my neighborhood. Along the edges of this lake, we have these reeds. These are called Phragmites, Phragmites with a PH. And so these are invasive. They're really not good for the local environment. People are trying to get rid of them. The good thing about them is they are hollow stemmed. And like most hollow stem things, they work really well for bee nests. So I'm just gonna cut a couple of these down. I'll bring them back to the lab and I will show you what to do next. So I have my Phragmites stems. I've cut the top off because I don't need the seed head on there. And I've cut the bottom off so I can get the, the bigger diameter. So different kinds of bees will prefer to nest in different diameters of these hollow stems. The smaller bees like smaller diameters, bigger bees like bigger diameters. In my yard, I wanna be able to attract a lot of different kinds of bees. So I'm gonna make my bee hotel out of various sizes of, of plant stems. And so basically all you wanna do here, so the bees need an open end, that's where they're gonna crawl in to make their nest. They also need a closed end. So these grasses like the Phragmites, um, they have a node every, you know, six inches or so. And so I want to cut this stem just past the node. So I have a straw here. We have about six to eight inches of open uh, hollow area. And then we have a closed area at the end. So I'm just going to cut up all these Phragmites, kind of like that, cut them right past the node. And you can see that these sections are getting smaller and smaller as I move up the plant. So bees, especially the bigger bees, like the deeper tubes to nest in, six inches or so. So when you get starting to these smaller tubes, they're not gonna be as useful for your bee hotels. So I'm gonna move on to the next one and I'm gonna get these big ones again. I'm going to cut this all up and then basically all we have to do is bundle them together. So I've, I've cut up my Phragmites reeds. Uh, people do this with bamboo. I've seen people do it with elderberry stems or raspberry stems. Pretty much any hollowed stem plant will work. Or even like the elderberry stems, they have that pith in there. The bees can excavate the pith out. They're just not very good at chewing through the hard material. So these Phragmites reeds, I'm just gonna bundle them all together with the closed end on one side, the open end on the other side. And then pretty much that's it. I have a simple bee hotel. 
So let's see, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if they're all uniform in the front. If there's some texture in there might be good. The bees can choose where they want to nest. Some bees might even nest in between these little tubes. The way I'm gonna do this because I'm lazy is I use a zip tie. So I'm just gonna zip tie this all together. There's my bee hotel. I'm gonna trim the excess off here. And so then where do you wanna put this in your yard? Well, a lot of these twig nesting bees like sunny warm spots. So I put it in a south, southeast facing area of my yard. Sometimes I'll put it underneath something. I'll put a little piece of wood on top or something like that. And I set it in there and the bees find it and start nesting in it. So in addition to these kind of hollow stemmed bee hotels, Another way you can do this is with paper straws. And so recently paper straws have become really popular uh, because plastic is really not good for the environment. I went to just my local craft store and I found these Valentine's Day straws after Valentine's Day. So they were something like 80% off. So paper straws are good because they breathe. People have tried using plastic straws and they found that if bees, bees will nest in the plastic straws, but there's something like a 90% mortality rate. The plastic straws don't let those nest cells breathe enough and they lead to fungus growth and other, and other things like that. So I'm gonna use these paper straws. I don't care that they're pink and say XOXO on them because with these paper straws, they're already pre-cut for me. Like I mentioned before, the bees like one end to be open and one end to be closed. So you could bundle these together and you know tape up one end so it's closed off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna package these paper straws into a cardboard tube. And so this cardboard tube will keep them all together and it shelters them a little bit from the elements. If you're wondering where you can get a cardboard tube like this, I recommend ordering one of our posters from our website we will ship that poster to you in one of these cardboard tubes. Once you get the poster out and hang it in your room, you can use the cardboard tube to make bee hotels. Just a little plug there. So anyway, with your cardboard tube, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna cut the end of it off at an angle. So I just use a bread knife, and I'm gonna cut this cardboard tube off so we have an angle which will kind of serve as a roof. So this will be angled down this direction, and then we'll shove our paper straws into there. So you can see I've cut this tube off at a little angle. So this will serve kind of like a, a ceiling over the bee hotel. I wanna measure this so that the end of the tubes come roughly to the end of where this is cut. So I'm gonna mark this end here. I gotta give myself a little bit of space for the cap. And so basically, if I cut it straight across right here and I pack that full of these paper straws, put the cap on one end, that'll be the closed end. This will be the open end. Then I can set this in my yard as another makeshift bee hotel. So I've cut this tube off. I have the cap that came with the poster. It fits snugly in there. Then basically, I'm just gonna fill this with these paper straws and we will be done. So one of the, the negative or maybe the downsides of using these paper straws is that they're all the same diameter. So you won't get as much of a diverse bee community nesting in this bee hotel as you might with uh, you know, natural variation that you find in the twigs that you're using. But these little paper straws are kind of small. You're probably not gonna get the blue orchard bee in here, but you will get a couple kinds of leaf cutter bee, maybe some other mason bees. So I used two packs of straws. I think it was around 50 straws and it fits nicely in there. Set this in your yard facing southeast. The bees will find it and nest in it. So I can't wait to, for the later in the summer to see what I get nesting in my two bee hotels. So really that's it. Two different styles of bee hotel, one made out of 
hollow twigs with a lot of variation in there. One made out of paper straws is pretty uniform. If you're worried about this cardboard tube getting too wet, you could paint this with some kind of, you know, acrylic paint or some other kind of waterproof waterproofing um, substance to kind of make that more waterproof. Some people will use PVC pipe for this. I didn't want to go out of my way to buy a big PVC pipe uh, for this demonstration. Instead, I decided to use my poster tube, but it looks like it works pretty well to me. Have you always wanted to be a hotel owner? I have. Well, not really, but I love to watch native bees in my yard and making these bee hotels is a great way to be able to do that. You might not know, but native bees, especially these twig nesting bees, are really docile. I can really literally stand this far away from the bee hotel and watch bees go in and out carrying their leaf pieces and carrying their pollen loads. And it's a really fun way to observe the bees in your backyard. So these are two bee hotels that I've made in past years. This one right here is using that same technique I just showed you. I just used a lot more Phragmites for that one. This one right here is just a block of wood that I drilled a bunch of holes in. And you can see if you look closely at them, we have bees that have occupied these. So we have leaf cutter bees. There's little leaf bits plugging up some of these holes. Um, we have little mud bits here from some other bees. We also have some wasps that are nesting in this one. This is from a grass carrying wasp. So you see this, this Phragmites style um, bee hotel works pretty well. This one right here is just a block of wood with holes drilled in it. Uh, again, you can see some leaf bits, leaf cutter bees will use this. So the problem with doing this, with leaving your bee hotel in the same spot year after year, is you can kind of get a buildup of parasites. So there's lots of wasps that will parasitize these, these cavity nesting bees, and there's other things like beetles and, and beetle larvae and fungus. And so when you, when you get a high density of bees nesting in one area, like these artificial bee hotels, you can also then increase the density of these parasites. You can just replace them with new bee hotels every few years or move them to a different spot in your yard so you can reduce that parasite load. I'm so, gonna put these in a different spot in the yard. So again, I want it facing southeast. I want it to get the morning sun so it can warm those bees up as they're looking for a place to nest. So let me find a spot and I'll show you where I put them. So I was gonna put these bee hotels up in my backyard with my other bee hotels, but I thought maybe I'll just do it here on campus. Uh, my building here is surrounded by some native vegetation, some fields. You can see it's early, early spring here. Uh, still snow in the mountains, nothing blooming yet. So it's a good idea to put your bee hotels out kind of early. A lot of the bees that are gonna nest here in the valley where I live are leaf cutter bees. And so those don't come out till later in the spring. I'm hoping I can get some mason bees, which are an earlier spring bee. But I just put them right here around the corner and hooked them on with some zip tie and some bungee cords. I'm really interested to see which one gets occupied first. Leave a comment below and give me your best guess. So, make a bee hotel, leave a comment below and tell me how it goes. Or send us a picture to our website or to our, some of our social media pages and maybe we can help you identify the bees that are nesting in your bee hotel.